welcome back to my gaming tips and tricks section. Today we're talking about the top 10 people you never want to raid with. I put this together as a cautionary warning based off of my own experience as a raider and as a raid leader. It's pretty subjective, and you may have encountered some people that I haven't, so by no means is this list complete. But based on my experiences, these are the top 10 people you'll want to avoid. Number 10, the Loot Whore. A lot of people like raiding for the challenge or to see if they've got what it takes to take on the hardest challenges in an MMO. But there's always that one guy in the raid who's in it for the money. Now if you're Han Solo, that's cool as hell. But where Han ditched that philosophy for friends and an incredible girlfriend who'd come to his rescue in the most jaw-dropping bikini ever designed, the loot horror remains in it for the money. Now this isn't to be confused with the loot ninja. The loot ninja comes in on a pug and basically tries to take as much gear as they can and then exit out. The loot whore, however, they need on every piece of gear that drops because in their mind, that piece of gear belongs to them. It's the piece that they've always needed. Forget for a moment that half of your team may still need a piece of equipment for that slot. The loot whore sees all gear as potentially theirs until it's given to somebody else. And at that point, they cry and scream about how fair the loot system is for your raid. Worse, the loot horror could also potentially be what I like to call the Altaholic, who wants this raid to gear up all of his alternate characters despite not actually using any of them in a productive way. Number 9, the Blamethrower. There's always some jackass on a team that never believes the problem in the raid is their fault. And since, since it isn't their fault, it must be someone else's. Blamethrowers can be obvious or they can be sneaky, but most of the time, blamethrowers are usually pretty easy to spot. They're the ones crying in the raid that despite themselves standing in a puddle of bad goo, they aren't getting healed enough. If they're a healer who isn't getting the job done, then they're usually crying about the whole team and how that whole team is taking too much damage. There's more versions of this, but I think you get the point. At the end of the day, the blame thrower isn't really ready to handle top level raiding because when the going gets tough, the blame starts throwing. There's a lot of variations on this, but the basics will always remain the same. In the blame thrower's mind, the fault lies with someone else. Always. Number 8, the backstabber. Do you feel that knife in between your shoulder blades, raid leader? I bet you never saw it coming. The backstabber can be from any part of the raid and works best from the angle you least expected it. The backstabber tells you everything you want to hear to your face or on voice chat or during the raid, but when you're not around, they do everything they can to undermine your authority. They'll talk to other members of the raid in private channels, tearing down every decision you've ever made. They'll tell the other raid members how what you've decided was unfair, and they'll basically try to sabotage any working relationship they can with ample amounts of negativity. Now this may sound a little bit like the blame thrower, but the key difference here is that while the blame thrower is blaming everyone else for their inadequacies, the backstabber is actively working against you. Kind of like the entire New York Knicks against the 90s Michael Jordan. Now this form of trash talking sometimes looks like sarcastic bonding between other teammates, so be aware, be cautious, and be vigilant. The backstabber wants to voice their negativity and make you look terrible whenever, however, and as often as they can while smiling to your face when you're around. Number 7, the first mate Barbosa. The backstabber, if he's given enough space to hate you, may or may not become what I call the First Mate Barbosa. The First Mate is basically like Captain Barbosa was to Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's been biding his time, he waited for the moment that Jack Sparrow would make his big enough mistake, and then he mutinies. The First Mate has been gunning for the position of a raid leader themselves, and therefore they're using backstabbing as their preferred method of taking over the raid. Now typically, if you can spot a backstabber early on, you can ditch them before they blow up into a full-on First Mate Barbosa. Their biggest kick is going to be trying to kick you when you're down. Another key to spotting a Barbosa is catching when someone on your team is all about forming alliances. If you've ever said, okay guys, here's the strategy we're going to do, and the reply from the first mate is, none of us slash all of us slash me so and so and such and such were talking, and then you have somebody there who's an alliance form. There's a difference between friends and alliance formers. The Barbosa is looking to form alliances to power play against you. They're trying to undercut your authority by changing your leadership into a forced democracy, quote unquote. 
This eventually can erode a ray team, since if it works once, the Barbosa, the Barbosa will smell blood in the water, and he'll convince his alliance that it's us against him to eventually oust you on his behalf. Number six, the know-it-all. Let's be clear, the know-it-all doesn't actually know everything. They only think they do. This isn't to be confused with what I call the product expert. You'll see them in my next video where I go over the top 10 raiders you absolutely want to raid with. The know-it-all, on the other hand, they get on your case. They try to tell you what to do because in their mind, they're the only one that knows what they're doing. They're a legend in their own mind, an encyclopedia of knowledge of the game. But they believe that they know better than the guys who created it. In their own mind, they're Neo from the Matrix. They feel like they can see the lines of code inside the game as if it's the walls of the Matrix. Now, however, the reality is that their ego is making them talk out of their ass. You'll notice that these guys are the first ones to switch from know-it-alls to blame throwers at the drop of a hat due to something that they feel is the quote-unquote obvious mistake someone else is making. They have zero humility and will likely try to brag about how much they know, or they'll try to show up someone on your team who speaks from experience or research. They'll tell the tank what their stats should be on their armor, despite never having played as a healer or a tank and being completely wrong about it. They are intractable in their faith and what they are saying is 100% accurate, and they will never back down and admit that they were wrong. The know-it-all is also the one who's probably going to leave you texts, emails, and flame your guild message boards about how much they think they know. They're constantly battling to prove just how much they think they know, and they'll incite more ridiculous arguments over stupid minutia than any other raider you got. Like the blamethrower, you're constantly trying to put out this person's fires, but with the know-it-all, you're probably having to do this nearly as a second job, because you're being bombarded on every front, making you frustrated at how this one person seems to piss off everyone. Number five, the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk, now this is the guy who is constantly raging out like a roided out Hulk over everything and anything that goes wrong. Now unlike the flamethrower or the backstabber who use targeted attacks, the Hulk just gets angrier and angrier and more destructive in all directions. Now sometimes this is also the person who rage quits, raid quits, or guild quits several times by the end of the week, leaving you scratching your head until he changes back to normal, reasonable Bruce Banner. The worst part about an Incredible Hulk is that you're never really sure what sets this person off, leaving you wondering if you're dealing with Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Jackass tonight. Number 4, The Alcoholic. Now, listen closely, I said alcoholic, not alcoholic. Altaholic was the person who had a lot of alts. The alcoholic, though, is actually an alcoholic. Don't confuse this with a social drinker or what I like to call the pub side pub run. The social drinker has maybe a single glass of wine after a tough day at work and then they come online to raid. The pub side pub run is something we used to do in Star Wars The Old Republic where we'd go to the Republic side and we would actually do what we call the pub side pub run, which means we were all drinking while running a particular instance. All right, it's kind of like doing a naked no more and wow. The point is, it's an event where everyone comes and agrees this is going to be a fun party where the beer runs like water and the raid runs like hell. The alcoholic, though, this is the person on the raid who refuses to play without being completely smashed and inebriated in some fashion with some kind of booze or drugs. To them, they think it's just a game after all, and regardless of how serious you may take it, they aren't having fun without a belly full of booze. Forget how this person's level of ability drops to nearly zero, ruining everyone else's night of raiding. He's just having a good time, and in his mind, this helps him play better, when all of the other raiders know 100% that it doesn't. It just makes him not see his own mistakes. The thing that really ticks me off about this particular person is how they waste everyone else's time, but no one usually feels comfortable pointing it out to this person because they feel they may come across as preachy or judgmental. However, raiding is a group intramural sport. You're only as good as your weakest link, and the alcoholic who is falling asleep at the wheel is likely to get everyone killed over and over and over again because they're not performing at the capacity needed to be competitive. Nothing frustrates a raid team faster than dying, and if you have an alcoholic on the team, be prepared to die. A lot. Number 3, the McCoy, or the Princess. This raider trope comes from the line, Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. 
or the kindergarten cop line, I'm a princess, not a policewoman. This is the raider on your team who is tunnel vision about the importance of their particular job. They'll DPS while in puddles. They'll heal in one spot and never move despite mechanics saying otherwise. Or it's a tank who tries to tank everything that comes out despite having a mechanic that requires an off tank. The McCoy brings down the raid, not necessarily because they're bad at what they do. In fact, they can actually be really quite good at what they do, which adds to the problem. They bring down the raid because they can't see the big picture, and see how every team member has to be concerned about tanking, healing, and DPS, despite whatever their individual role in the raid is. McCoys and princesses are pretty easy to spot, because you'll ask them to do something and they'll refuse to do it on the grounds of, that's not my job, I'm a DPS, not a tank. Or, if I run that bomb, I won't be shooting the thing I need to shoot, so why even bring me? This person is very tunnel vision about the job they perform, and is usually unwilling, unflexible, and unable to think about the raid as a whole, instead of how important their particular job is. Number 2. The Iron Man now, don't get me wrong guys, I love Tony Stark from the comic books and the movies, so I don't want people to get confused here. Tony Stark, or the actor who plays him, Robert Downey Jr., would be amazing to raid with, and I'd probably give my left nut to do so. Either one of these guys is charming, funny, and brilliant at what he does. What I'm referencing though, when I say Iron Man, is how Tony Stark gears up fast and then takes off, creating more problems than they solve. Hopefully, that clears it up a bit, because I think we've all met the Iron Man. Now, Iron Man can be really hard to spot. This is the guy who joins the raid team saying that they're in it for the long haul, that they love progression, and that more than anything, they want to be a part of the team you've worked so diligently to put together. However, this person is probably pretty fresh and doesn't have the skills and or the gear to really fill a spot. Alternatively, he could be fresh from another raid team where he didn't see a lot of action or just back to the game after a long time away. Your team, though, is all about bringing people up, maybe you need some new people, and everyone seems to like this person. So you take them from raid to raid, building up their skills, gear, and abilities, and start planning on how to use this person to push your team forward to the next challenge. And that is when you see Iron Man fly off in his shiny new armor. Because, you know, reasons. My personal favorites that I've always heard from these folks are usually, I have this time commitment that keeps me from raiding, or I just don't like the way things are working out with this team. Now regardless of what they say, you will eventually catch a headline later on from somebody else in another raid team that despite this person saying they couldn't raid with you guys, you'll see them raiding with someone else. With all that shiny gear you help them get. Number one. The overcommitted progression guy. Now don't get me wrong guys, I don't mind somebody who's committed to progression. If you're raiding seven times per week, six hours a day, that's commitment. But the overcommitted progression guy is the guy who raids that, plus also likes to decry that everyone else is a filthy casual. The overcommitted guy, he cuts players on a team loose or encourages raid leaders to do it, because progression to the next nightmare mode fight is the only thing that they live for. Forget real life goals like making friends or hiking the Grand Canyon or going to Paris. The only thing on this raider's mind is taking down that next boss. And if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. This person is most easily spotted by the trail of broken game friendships behind them and overly frustrated raiders around them. If drinking blood could somehow bring down that next boss, this raider would do it, and he would tell the other raiders to do it too, because getting that next tier of gear, you know the gear I'm talking about, the one that becomes completely obsolete when the next patch comes out, well, that doesn't matter. It's completely worth sacrificing friendships and real life commitments for, for this raider. In the end, this is my top pick for the most frustrating raider, because of all the people who will burn you, They'll do it for something that is so stupid, for an achievement or a piece of gear in a video game that means absolutely jack squat in the real world. And if you're not careful, their black hole obsession with that next boss will pull you in too. So that's it guys, that's my top 10 list. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and if you feel like I missed one on this list, go ahead and put it below. Tell me what your experiences are. Go ahead and feel free to give me a chance to uh, let you vent uh, a little bit on my channel, but please be respectful of the other people on here. Now, I don't like leaving things on a negative note, so already, my next video, I actually know what it's going to be. It's going to be my top 10 people you absolutely want to rate. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and that way, when my next video comes out, you'll be able to catch that right away. Anyway guys, until then, see you next time.